Hi, this presentation is going to walk through the installation and setup of the schema.org blueprints module for Drupal. A little about me. My name is Jake Rockwitz. I want to make your life easier by solving complex problems with simple, well thought out solutions. You can find me at jrockwitz on the web. So some concepts you need to know before you get started. Well, listen, schema.org, everyone should be familiar with it. It is a collaborative community activity with a mission to create and maintain and promote schemas for structured data on the internet, on web pages, and email messages, and beyond. It is a specification to describe things so that machines, search engines, AI, can understand them. A schema.org first approach leverages schema.org as the foundation for building content models using structured data, which is API first, standardized, and universal. So we're using, instead of building our content model and then forcing it to align with schema for search engines to understand it, we're using schema.org as the content model solves a lot of problems. One, search engines understand your data. Two, we don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. Everyone could have a standardized content model. With that said, the schema.org blueprints module takes a schema.org first approach to building content models and structured data in Drupal, which means we bring in the schema.org spec into Drupal, and when we go to create content types, paragraph types, or any entity type, we align it with schema.org. We use the schema.org definition, for the types and the properties, and we even take the naming convention, the descriptions, and the relationships from schema.org. Now, schema.org is not for the faint of heart. It is a pretty vast spec, over 900 types and a thousand properties. And sometimes it can be a little confusing. Just to be clear, you can go and research each type before you implement it. Uh, there's references throughout the module to different documents about different schema.org types. And, you know, listen, taking a schema.org first approach for content models is a fairly simple concept. People have been doing this. The Umami demo theme uses it for recipes. Now, implementing schema.org via Drupal can quickly become complex. I would like to say almost anything can become complex in Drupal. We all know that's one of the challenges. This approach requires a commitment to understanding schema.org and Drupal. Just have some patience, ask questions, read the documentation. That's why I'm doing these, the, this video. Now. Standardization, I want to emphasize, this is all about standardization. It helps maximize compatibility, interoperability, repeatability, and quality. This is across the board. This makes it easier for everyone to understand our data when we expose it via APIs. We can also have similar content types in Drupal, really identical. Now, composition, I'm going to explain a lot more, but the, the goal of the Blueprints model is to break things down to smaller components using submodules to improve maintainability, stability, and support. I'm going to reiterate that in a second. And I just want to emphasize with configuration, if you get overwhelmed, there's reasonable default configuration while everything is customizable. And automation, listen, this is all about automation. There's lots of tools to automate the creation of your schema.org types through Drush, create multiple types. It just leads to saving time, energy, and money, and, and just overall improvements in quality. Now let's get started. Browse the spec. I'm not even going to show it to you. You should go there look at it, understand it, most people have, but definitely visit the project page, read the installation guide, FAQs. Each module has a readme markdown file that's available in multiple places. Understand the architecture decisions behind the module and open Drupal's help section. So I'm going to just kind of go to the project page and just emphasize that the documentation is right here. There's an FAQ and installation guide which will repeat most of the things we're talking about. Just walking through, little notes. Now if I click back, I want to emphasize this document. This is a decision, all the architecture decisions. Everything about the module is noted here, and I think it's very important for people curious about the sub-modules or integrations that, for example, we're using the address module in Drupal to align with schema.org's address field. We're using corresponding entity references to manage inverse of relationships and so on and so on. So there's just, you know, smart date is used for date and schedule. Schedule is part of event. Definitely worth paying attention to that document. I'm going to keep going and we're going to just talk about submodules because I'm hinting you're going to get overwhelmed and I want to <laughs> prepare you for it. And because we're using schema.org as the foundation for a content model, we understand what's being built and what modules and features may be needed. Each feature tends to be a module in Drupal. Hence, think about it, most content types need meta tags, moderation, sitemap, type tray, field group, allowed formats, and more. And they need these modules, these integrations, and we can automate that because we know we're creating content types. We can say, 
all content types need meta tags, we can even say we'll exclude certain content types. The best example would be a, an event content type should use smart date and probably could use the scheduler to open and like to publish and unpublish that event based on the date. Now, why submodules? And you're going to start seeing them happen. You know, they're smaller, they're more maintainable, they're scalable because when you isolate a small component, you can keep building on it and they become very testable. So we can test spe a specific integration point that we're working on and make sure it's working. And this all led to a lot of extendability. Basically, because we did this architecture of submodules, there's tons of great hooks in the core that allow you to alter, enhance, define everything. And I want to emphasize that every submodule is optional. I, I mean, there's a JSON LD integration module. That is optional. If you're not exposing your Drupal application to the web, don't use that module or any of the other modules related to it. There's no benefit to having it there. But most sites will need it. Now, let's start installing stuff. So I want to call out um, really the Composer Merge plugin, which just allows us to not have all the dependencies in the main Composer file, but to move them into a Composer library's just own file that you can at runtime say, I want to pull in all these dependencies from this file, or you can copy those dependencies. You don't have to use the, the Composer library's file, but it's a good way to isolate those decisions. Now, the patches plugin, you're going to see in the library some patches. That's included in core, but I wanted to call it out here when you see the library's file with patches. So what are we going to do? We're going to create a Drupal site using Composer. We want to change this ability to dev because the module is in alpha and we want to make sure it's going to work. And then we're going to want to require some packages and get the Composer Merge plugin installed. From there, we're going to have to define the Composer Merge plugin settings. This is what they are. You know, where you're saying include this library's file in the schema.org module and merge everything. And then we're going to run Composer update. So we're going to do this. And I have my fingers crossed. This is very stressful. <laughs> I like saying that because then at least people know this demo is not easy. Okay, we have a clean Drupal site. I'm in the root. I'm doing Composer config. To, I'm setting up the minimum stability. I'm going to go in and add these modules. This will be fairly quick. There's only five modules. They've been cached. It sets them up. We have to allow the plugin. We're here. We have them available. Now, we need to go into the extra section of the composer file, which is right here that I had already opened. Go down to the bottom. We've got to make sure we track this right. It's right here. And we're going to basically add the merge plugin. So we're saying grab the libraries in this directory. And I'm going to spend a second showing that to you. So, for example, this allows us to pull in some extra repositories that Masonry is used for, I think, the content browser, entity browser system. Here's all the modules. For example, I had to pin the custom field. There's a minor bug, which will be shortly fixed, but it shows you this gives a lot of guidance on all these dependencies on how to manage and what's expected. And then we're even including a few quick and simple patches to fix some minor things. Okay. Now, we are going to crossing my fingers. I need to even pause as I do this because it's like if we go to our scratch pad. What's the next thing? We got to run composer update. Okay. This is going to take a second. What the reason it's taking longer than the first one is it's pulling in that libraries with dozens of dependencies. So it has to calculate all the relationships. Now everything's cached. So this will go relatively quickly, which is done. And now we're going to basically turn on just a few quick modules. What I'm going to do is help out, get the admin toolbar, Devel, and the schema.org help module installed. Boom, they're enabled. I have a clean install here. I'm going to log in. And this is a clean install of Drupal 10.1. If I go over to the help section, boom you're going to start to see that there's this dedicated block for schema.org help. You'll see why it's needed, but right now I'm going to skip, click on the blueprints module, and you're going to start seeing ready the other information I just told you about is here. The decisions, the roadmap, the MD files, they're available. There's even documentation that you're seeing here to further explain exactly what's happening in that Composer JSON file. You could copy this in. That's another approach. Um, with that, there's a little help to tell you, you can enable all the modules, how to do 
a bunch of settings, you know what the default settings are, and then here's all the submodules, and very few, none of them are enabled. I want to emphasize the install just goes to the extend page. This will probably evolve over time, but it's a way to just keep an inventory. And you see, I recognize that these submodules add complexity, therefore we have to kind of organize them and group them and think about them. At the very bottom are drush commands to actually enable multiple modules at once, quickly and simply. So like you could say, I only want to do core, but for our purposes, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to run this command and I'm going to scroll up for a second and say the command is getting a list of all the modules installed. It's grepping on schema.org is the namespace and it's installing them. It's very simple and then it's figuring out all the dependencies and going out and enabling those. This is a little notice, which I, I don't mind calling stuff out like this. It's a from config rewrite. The config rewrite module allows you to tweak little settings as a module installed, overwrite a little bit of config. It is a brilliant module. I want to emphasize, and I'll talk about it in other presentations, it's heavily used in starter kits. We're all set. It's installed. The cache was cleared. So now let's go back to our site. Uh, I'm going to go, well, you know what a good trick here is? is to go back up to the main help section. And what you're going to see and why I had to do this grouping is here's all the submodules enabled. And you cl can click through to each one and get an explanation. If you want to understand the address module on how to configure it, what it's used for, little explanations, this helps scale it out. If there's bugs, notes, you can go through it. This drop down allows you to toggle through everything else too. Um, and you can watch videos. I forgot to point that out. This video will be included here as you move on. You've successfully installed the schema.org blueprints module at this point and have fun and play with it. I will play with it for one second to say, let's just do the example of, let's create a content type. I'm going to go add a schema.org type to this. And I always like recipe. It's just really cool. And listen, I'm going to spend two seconds to just say, well, first off, it's part of a food established mapping set, but we're going to just do this one. And for anyone not familiar with it, I'm going to walk through. We're creating a recipe content type. We have full control over it. The description's blank because it's going to pull it from schema.org. And now here are all the fields. The yellow ones are the new ones being enabled. And you can go in and tweak them. That's part of the UI to say what it's about. Um, keep going. By the way, this is just a minor seven theme issue that I'll fix. But go down to the bottom. Hit save. And it now generates a recipe content type that meets schema.org spec perfectly. I want to emphasize how important and cool that is. And we go over to content, add content. By the way, this is the type tray module. I think it's awesome too. It allows you to kind of organize, categorize all your different types. You can even favorite them. And I can click through. And now we're here and we have this pristine content type for defining all the details about a recipe. All of it right here to start. And if you use the demo module, you can get even a more fancy UI. And you can note that concept, these are all, so submodules configured the fields because there's cu some custom fields here. Like right now, there's a custom field, the custom field modules kicking in to define that. And then you could see meta tags were automatically added we have the sitemap added and the editorial sidebar, which is just a nice way to kind of put additional metadata onto any schema.org type. That's it for a demo, but have fun. Enjoy doing this. Let's keep going. I'm really happy that went well. I skipped ahead to the dress steps. That's hard, you know, but let's keep going. So let's talk about this. Um, some tips and tricks. Listen, feel free to copy the contents of composer.libraries to sewn into your projects composer to some file. You can also start pinning versions of those dependencies, which I personally think is very important for an enterprise site. You do not want dependencies shifting automatically. You want to be really clear on what version you're running. And you got to review all the submodules. Disable the submodules you don't need. You know, you can disable most submodules on production. I am working on improving that maybe by providing a config split recommendation for because Let's be clear, some submodules are used to generate content types and some submodules are used to expose the schema.org data to the world, so you need those on production. The ones that help generate content types you don't need on production because you're generally not doing it. So the example, what you need, you probably need just own LD support on production. Um, and I, you know what, I'm going to spend two seconds and emphasize 
why I'm how I'm trying to approach that because I think it's nice to give people little gems here. That's why I'm tracking this table here because it's telling you which modules have JSON LD support. They must be enabled on production if you want JSON LD to work when these are being used. Listen, copy code. The code is clean, well thought out. If you want to do your own submodule integration, you can look at a submodule that does something similar and copy the code and ideas to create your own custom submodules. Very easy to do. You can even copy the test. So listen, just some next steps. Listen, explore schema.org types and properties. Determine your required content models and, and configure the submodules and integrations to see what you want. Experiment with mapping sets and starter kits. I will do a dedicated presentation on those. Those are key to really building rich content models, not one at a time, but multiple. The demo just provides a better user experience, like the ideal user experience. And yes, at the end of the day, once this is all done and you have a beautiful content model that's ready to be populated when you migrate your data over from even an existing Drupal instance or a totally outside one, you're going to want to export your configuration. Thanks. You can find me at Jay Rockowitz. You can learn more. I put in the wrong link, but I'm not going to redo this video. So you need to go to the schema.org project page, not the starter kit. I apologize for that mistake, but it's always good to have a little mistake in there. Enjoy the rest of your day.